Ladies and gentlemen, this is Internet Personality Vangelis, and it's time to finally take a look at the vaunted SH Fig Arts Renewal Kabuto. Except that's not his actual name. This was, in fact, the first release in a new SH Fig Arts offshoot, and his real moniker is SH Fig Arts Shinkocho Seho Kamen Rider Kabuto Rider Form. Except we all started calling him Renewal Kabuto and never stopped. But I mean, look at his box. It's such a departure. How did we all go down such a world's smallest Transformers path of taking our nickname for gospel? Does anybody actually care? No? Then I guess I'm done buffering for this opening B-roll. The sculpt is the major deal of this release, as the Shinkocho Seho mission statement is something along the lines of, this figure is sculpted with the idea that it contains an actual human skeleton. I mean, there aren't real bones in here. I think, but the proportions are massively boosted in their realism compared to the thinner and more stylized SH Fig Arts Kabuto sculpt that appeared way back in the era of the lion's infancy. And man, it looks delicious, especially with all that shiny candy-like red paint to bring the armor plating to life. There's even a little bit of it on the soles of Kabuto's rider kicking shoes. This is a toy made to represent the years of experience and evolution that SH Fig Arts has gone through. Such a strong silhouette. Even the pornographically photogenic compound eyes have gotten slightly tighter texture sculpting underneath the translucent blue lens pieces. This figure's got the look of a toy that walks the capital F friggin' path of capital GD goddamn heaven! This guy is an SH Fig Arts toy, but there are some interesting things about his posability worth noting, especially in light of the original Fig Arts Kabuto, but... His head just joints, his neck joints, they are just fig arts. There are two joints, one at the top, one at the bottom of the neck, and they allow for a large range of motion. Uh, the back of his helmet does co collide with the back of his collar a bit, so he can't look super far up. That's about it, though. Uh, his shoulders work like this. So they've got that deal where the uh, shoulder pad is hinged down over here to make for a bit more of a, a natural uh, and smooth-looking silhouette when you pull the arm up. There is a ball socket joint in here for this kind of motion. And then, if you want to have him pointing up, his pecs are on, on uh, these, like, strange, slidey double, double joints. So his pecs can dance. This is, like, this is neat when you get the figure. It's like, wow, his pecs can move around on their own. But I, I never, I don't feel it actually does much. Like, it lets them get a bit out of the way for, for this. That's a... That's about it, in my experience. And more often than not, I put him down and I bump it and I'm like, oh, his peck is out of place. And it, it becomes a bit more of a nuisance than a, than a, a boon to, to me in practice. There is a bicep swivel. There is a double-jointed elbow. And he has got a wrist swivel and a wrist hinge. But due to the way that his hands work, the wrist hinge only goes one way. This is, this is only a bummer in the context of when he's holding weapons. It just means he can't, like, you know, point a blade or a gun at someone as easily as uh, he could if he could bend his wrist that way. His uh, chest has got, like, this movable flap on the front of his armor plate to ostensibly make way for the way his torso joint would work, but his belt often rides up a little bit, bumps into it, and, again, it makes this flap not really feel like it's doing what I thought it would do. Um, it's hard to explain. Just, I, I, I expected it to make way for the belt or make way for his stomach, but I, I find it, it just doesn't. Uh, so he has this ab joint. He can crunch forward a little bit like this. He can go back a whole lot more like this. It's actually a double hinge inside his chest. Um, and it, it's weird. Like, it, it works. But it just feels odd. It feels almost over-engineered for what it's doing. Uh, there's also a waist ball joint that's not in the middle of his torso, which uh, the seam is covered up by the belt. This, this guy's torso is doing new, fresh stuff for when this figure came out, but I feel like other figures have done similar things slightly better and slightly more simply. Um, but he certainly looks good while he's doing it. His hips are not pull-down Fig Arts hips, they're like inset Fig Arts hips, uh, but he still has... A decent range here. If you twist his thigh, he's got a really good range, and you can see how this works. It's like the Gaim Fig Arts, where it's just a uh, a hinge inside the the hip bulk. There's a thigh swivel. There's a double jointed knee. This looks pretty good. Uh, then his feet have got tilts. They've got forward and back. They've got side to side. They've got toe joints for toe. And uh, in general, this guy is nicely posable. 
Uh, I've not ever found anything, despite like what may look like a limitation here or there, I've never, never had trouble getting this guy into a pose. It's just more that I find his torso engineering to be somewhat unintuitive, especially given what I thought it was going to do. Like, I thought these pack joints were going to get out of the way for even deeper forward arm swinging. I thought that this stomach flap was going to get out of the way for super deep ab crunching, and it, it kind of doesn't. Oh, also, you can twiddle this. <laughs> Kabuto has fists for punching the deserving and the foolish, as well as a Figma-style hand rack. This is weird. Not bad, not unwanted, but weird. As is the way that each hand includes its own wrist joint pegging into the forearms rather than socketing onto stationary wrist pegs. Anyway, there's also a pair of relaxed hands, which honestly feel more like Tendo Soji's default option. Speaking of Tendo Soji, there is, of course, a sole right hand which is pointing its index finger a little more pronouncedly, because Tendo Soji do what Tendo Soji do. The other two pairs of hands work with the pair of included accessories. Basically, one pair is made to hold the kunai gun as a gun, while the other pair is made to hold the kunai gun as a hatchet. That same pair can also hold the unsheathed kunai. The accessories have very sharp paintwork with a load of crisp and thin metallic lines along their small and detailed sculpts. One could make an argument about maybe the kunai could have come out of the kunai gun, but hold them next to each other and you'll see that this thing's getting a little bit TV prop-ish in how much the once hidden kunai blade has ballooned into being something that totally could not fit in there. Shinkocho Seho kicked off with a bang, celebrating one of the first major SH Fig Arts achievements with a much desired renewal of Kamen Rider Kabuto's rider form. Suffice to say, I have plenty of praise to shower on this piece. It's a good friggin' piece of friggin' Fig Arts candy. Taste it and enjoy! The veil of hype and praise couldn't keep me blindsided forever though, because this guy is accessory light. Of course, there aren't many other things he could have come with, so... Where are my Fig Arts scaled Zectmizer parts? Also, the wrist joint design robs Kabuto of a 90 degree rotated hinge angle that would work much nicer with the hatchet or kunai accessories. These aren't critical faults, but the wrist joint thing especially surprised me in the not so good way. Also, these are the only crits I have on this figure because it's real choice. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Vangelis, and this figure absolutely opened the hypothetical door to a ton of Kabuto series Fig Arts remakes under Shinkocho Seho. Only one is happening so far as of this recording, so Gatak fans rejoice! But before Shinkocho Seho went down the secondary rider path, it delivered some more heavy hitters, much needed heavy hitters. Hit the beat, ladies and gentlemen. Keep your beat.